Hello, this is Kyle Davidson, and today I'm going to be going over an introduction to the uh, 89600 Vector Signal Analysis Software from Keysight, formerly Agilent, uh, and specifically how to use it for communications electronic intelligence applications. And uh, the idea is, by the end of this presentation, you're going to be able to take a, a signal of completely unknown parameters. Um, you, all we'll get is a, a, a basic spectrum. Uh, we're going to take that spectrum, look at it, the, the time frequency domain, uh, do some simple demodulation, and use a, a few tricks and tools inside the VSA software uh, to be able to uh, quantify the parameters of our how it's modulated, what its symbol rate is, and that will eventually lead us to the ability to actually spit out on the other end um, the bit stream, so the, the actual binary or hexadecimal information that we'd be getting um, th from a radio. So to start, uh, we're going to be opening a signal, and uh, I'm going to open a recording, mystery signal 3 in this case, and I'm just going to auto-scale this signal up here at the top. And we see something that's uh, not terribly surprising, um, a spectrum and uh, the linear magnitude in the, in the time domain. And this doesn't really tell us much of anything at this point. Um, we can estimate the occupied bandwidth by using that tool right there, the show occupied band power by right clicking. And that number, if you, you look down in the lower left uh, right here, gives us a, an estimate of around 1.1, we'll pause it, 1.1 um, megahertz. And that's a little far off. It's um, about 5% off the actual bandwidth for the, the signal we're interested in, sorry, the symbol rate of the uh, signal we're interested in. On top of which, we don't actually know anything about the modulation at this point. Uh, is it amplitude phase, uh, frequency modulated, um, what, is it a 16 qualm, a 64, a 256 qualm signal? So we need to start gathering that information and, and piecing together the different aspects of the signal. So I'm going to remove the show occupied main power um, uh, blue piece marker. And uh, I'm actually going to go up into uh, measurement setup, measurement type, and I'm going to change it from vector, which is the, the standard um, analysis system here, to analog EMOD. And uh, that's going to do nothing at first, um, because we're still looking at the, uh, the original channel. But if I go up here and I change it from channel 1 spectrum to DMOD channel 1, main time, and down at the bottom to uh, channel 1 um, Bmod channel 1 and uh, the spectrum, I, I see a few key things. And the first is up at the top, um, well, really what's getting output here is that the, um, the signal is attempted by the software to be analog demodulated. And if we go into measurement setup, analog Bmod properties, it, it indicates the Bmod style in this case is amplitude modulation. And we can change it to frequency and phase as well. Now if we press play, we'll see there's um, some modulation in the phase in this case. Um, if we uh, change it to frequency, we see there's some modulation in the frequency uh, and some modulation in the amplitude. Now, if I switch to um, a slightly different signal, we're going to recall Mystery Signal 1 here. Um, this is strictly a, an amplitude modulated signal right here. So if I go to the DMOD properties and change it to frequency or phase, as you can see there and there, we aren't getting any modulation. It, whereas I switch it back to amplitude modulation and we clearly see it as modulated. So this is the first step to, to piece together how our signal is modulated. But we really kind of need to, to track down a, a key quantity from this. Uh, and that's going to be the symbol rate. Um, and this was uh, uh, crashing a little with me trying to record this at the same time as uh, I have... Uh, um, um, <laughs> running the VSA software since it is a fairly demanding piece of software. Uh, but what I'll, I'll do is I'm actually going to turn on digital persistence here and, and if we leave it running sorry, I'm gonna sorry, go back and, and recall the appropriate signal. Here we go, that's signal 3. Um, we can see that there is a clear spike in the spectrum of the amplitude modulated signal. And uh, that is actually from, um, if we go, uh, uh, um, the actual data rate of the signal. So if I was to go in uh, and place a marker here, 
right on that. Uh, what we would end up measuring is the data rate of the, the sorry, the, the symbol rate of the signal we're interested in. And if you want to go and actually check uh, the math behind this or the theory behind this, um, I'd highly recommend Wireless Receiver Digital, uh, Wireless Receiver Design for Digital Communications by Kevin McClanning, and specifically Chapter 12 of that covers demodulation and how this spike as the result of trying to amplitude demodulate a uh, digital wa waveform um, is uh, uh, produces that uh, clear spec uh, spectral spike um, related to the symbol rate. Um, and this marker here gives us something that is close, but it is not close enough. Uh, you can see before we were estimating about 1.1 megahertz uh, being our, our symbol rate. This gets it down to 1.05, which is pretty close, but it's about a tenth of a percent off. And we'll, we'll see in a few minutes, that's actually significant inside um, um, the, the attempt at digitally demodulating this. It'll produce a large amount of error and a signal that is basically unrecognizable. The difference between 1.049 and 1.050 megahertz. So we need a, a little more precision. And if I uh, have, go to this, all I've done here in uh, it's the same signal running. Um, if I've gone into the uh, the resolution measurement setup, resolution bandwidth, and I've simply increased um, the uh, number of frequency points um, to 25601. Um, and you can turn on uh, an average as well in our MS video. Um, and that gets a nice clean spike right where we want it. Um, and if we add a marker at that point, turns out the frequency there is 1.051 megahertz. And that is the number we want. That is about as accurate as we're going to get for the symbol rate of the, uh, the signal we're trying to demodulate. So now we need to go back and, and attempt to figure this thing out um, in, the, in the digital domain. We know our, our signal is um, frequency phase and amplitude modulated, which means it's some kind of quadrature modulation. We know the symbol rate, and uh, we know the, the frequency it's actually being transmitted at. If we uh, were to go back to channel one and, and look at the spectrum again, uh, we can clearly tell from over here it's a 10 gigahertz signal. So I'm going to actually file preset all. So it's, I've essentially reinitialized the software. I'm going to recall that mystery signal again. And I'm going to create a, a two by two grid of windows. And what I'm going to do now in, inside the software is I'm going to change the measurement setup again, measurement type from vector to digital demodulation. And at first, we're not going to see anything. Um, it's trying to digitally demodulate the signal, uh, but the constellation diagram in the upper left is an absolute mess. And you, uh, in the upper right, we actually have the error for each one of these symbols plotted, uh, the first 0 to 156 signals, symbols we're looking at. And clearly, there is uh, more error than is, is um, uh, useful to produce a useful signal. So we need to go to the measurement setup, digital demod properties, and this window pops up. And inside this window, we need to enter really two key key values. Um, I'm going to change the uh, um, format from uh, pi by 4 DPSK to uh, 256 qualm. And the reason I specified that is because it's a large number uh, to quadrature amplitude modulate a signal, more than I expect my signal to be. So we'll, we'll end up with a constellation diagram. It likely will be 16 or 64, 128 qualm, um, but it'll appear on the 256 qualm map as that um, 16 or 64 or so on. So uh, we just overestimate the number of uh, symbols we're expecting. The symbol rate, we enter what we found, and that was 1.051 megahertz. So. We'll increase the, actually we'll leave the number of symbols we have there. Um, I'm going to leave under the filter, it's a communication signal, so we'd apply a root raise cosine at either end. And we're gonna leave the alpha for that root raise cosine at 0 0.35. And this governs essentially the amount of um, extra bandwidth we contain with our signal signal um, as a result of uh, the, the digital filtering on, filtering on either end. And we're gonna turn off the, the pulse surge there. And that's all we're going to do. 
Now, there is uh, sort of one remaining issue here, and that's actually, uh, it's trying to look at two little spectrum. So if I go down to the spectrum in the, the lower left here, and I simply uh, increase it, we'll go up to, to five megahertz. We can see now in the lower left, we get our spectrum that we're expecting for this signal. And then clearly in the upper left, we've got a, a 16 qualm signal. We have 16 symbols mapped. And we now have enough information to go back and actually tweak um, some of the values inside the digital DMOD setup. Um, we've got some error. It's higher than I would like. Um, I'm gonna turn on some digital persistence over here to, to get a sort of persistent view of this. And in the lower right, we have the actual symbols being demodulated. But it's a little off because we're telling it it's 256 when really it's 16 qualm. So we'll change that to 16 qualm. And we get the number we want. And we're actually gonna increase the number of symbols. Uh, the more the better in, in most cases. Um, and we go back and we can see uh, we're getting uh, much, well, we're not really reducing that error at this point, but we can see the, the symbols now being up with the hexadecimal down here reflects what is actually occurring for this radio. So one more, a uh, few more things to do. We wanna reduce the error in the upper right. And to do that, we know, need to go into the digital DMOD properties. Now, principally, the, if we don't have a perfect value for the symbol rate, um, that's the first thing we would have to hone in on. And the symbol rate in this case, if I was to change it to 1.1 like we originally estimated, you can now see that this signal becomes untenably demodulated. Um, so in the upper left, what was a nice clean 16 qualm signal becomes an absolute mess of a constellation diagram. If I change it to 1.05 megahertz, pretty darn close, but not quite where we are. We can sort of see the 16 qualm signal but the error vector magnitude is far off what we want for this. Um, whereas that little change to 1.051 megahertz, it's almost right where we want it to be. Um, and I'll actually try and enter the, uh, the full number we got, 562 megahertz. That doesn't really tighten it up. So uh, the actual estimate was a little off um, and no surprise, it's um, sort of closer to a whole number than what we measured. So it's about 1.051 megahertz, uh, which is pretty accurate. So we have a, a few things we can do at this point, um, but usually tweaking the symbol rate is sort of what will get us locked on relatively well. Um, we can adjust the alpha. Since we don't know what it is for this, I'm going to change it to 0 0.3. And we can see, uh, actually I'm gonna ch turn off the digital persistence from there. Um, we can see the amount of error getting reduced. If we go back to 0 0.35, the error goes up a little. 0 0.3, it's reduced. 0 0.25, it's even smaller. And 0 0.2, that's a really nice number. So it looks like our, our alpha in this case is about 0 0.2. Um, we've drastically reduced our, our error vector magnitude and it looks like to be down around um, half a percent um, error vector magnitude. So we have a signal that's been uh, locked onto essentially at this point. Um, so there you go. We've taken a, a signal of unknown modulation and symbol rate. Uh, we've found the modulation. We found the symbol rate. Uh, we've tweaked for the various parameters of that uh, that signal. We figured out that it was after it was some kind of quadruple modulated signal that it was specifically 16 qualm, and the results uh, ended up getting uh, coming out in the lower right. So uh, if I was to pause this at any point. Uh, those letters and numbers down there are the, the hexadecimal that we would be interested in. And uh, this is why cryptography is so important. So uh, I hope you found this informative, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments.